Hi, got a few minutes? This video scribe summarizes some, but not all, of the key issues in the topic on regulation and standard setting, and particularly this one will focus on regulation. To regulate or not to regulate, that is the question. Imagine the world before accounting regulation. Was the introduction of accounting regulation necessary, or was it a knee-jerk reaction to a bushfire designed to make politicians or regulators look good? Or did it start off in the public interest, but become captured by the very people that it was initially designed to control? There are two fundamental theories that can be used to answer whether we need accounting regulation or not. Adam Smith's invisible hand tells us that we can rely on the market to determine the optimal provision of any good or service. So accounting disclosure can be thought of as just like bread or milk. The market will pay for the accounting information that they want. The benefit of a market-based solution to the question of how much accounting disclosure we should have is that information will only be generated if someone is willing to pay for it. That leads to the right amount of information, or at least it should if the market is efficient. The argument that accounting disclosure needs to be regulated relies on market failure. One of the reasons why accounting information is not like bread and milk is that information is a public good. Specifically, accounting information is not excludable. Once it's out there and people can get it for free, they won't be willing to pay for it. That shifts the balance toward insufficient disclosure. Accounting disclosure is important because it's the oil that lubricates the market. Correct information about the true economic condition of organizations allows for better decisions by investors. That puts scarce resources into those organizations that can make the best use of them. In other words, it leads to efficient capital allocation. Some of the other benefits of regulation are that it leads to cheaper production, standardized information, greater public confidence, and might be important in stopping managers from misusing the organization's resources. The arguments against regulated accounting disclosure is that it leads to too much disclosure. Without the discipline of the market to determine the optimal amount of accounting disclosure, who decides? Regulation conveys benefits to some and imposes costs to others. Who decides who will win and who will lose? Those with the most to win or lose are going to try to influence the process and get the regulation that suits them best. This is called lobbying, and it can be expensive, and lead to regulation that is biased toward the group that can lobby the hardest. How do you create regulation that's appropriate for every type of organization? Once regulation is in place, it's difficult to get rid of. The other argument is that regulation is not necessary at all. Based on signaling theory, we know that managers have incentives to voluntarily disclose information to the market in order to reduce the cost of capital. Furthermore, they have incentives to do it honestly because the market will punish the business and the manager if they try to fool it. If you believe signaling theory, then it means that managers are better left to decide the most appropriate level and form of accounting disclosure. For example, accounting regulation stops organizations from including internally generated intangibles. In other words, if we just let them do it the way they want to, they may provide more and more relevant information. To regulate or not to regulate was the question. In the second installment for this topic,